Hi, I'm Michelle Zahner. I perform in Japanese Breakfast and I direct the music videos. I'm Adam Kladny. I'm a cinematographer and I shoot the Japanese Breakfast music videos. We are going to break down the Jubilee trilogy. Was that bad? No, I want a high five. I think our original shoot date was March 20th, 2020. <laughs> and our producer was going to fly from Los Angeles and she was like, do you think this pandemic thing is going to impact our shoot? And I said, I don't see why it has anything to do with us. <laughs> I was like really struggling to figure out what the concept was for this. I invited you over and we had this weird epiphany that was very simple. That was basically like, oh, the key to making a music video is to have fun. Yeah, <laughs> it's like absolutely. It's a very wholesome realization where I we watched uh, the Beastie Boys sabotage music video. Which is the best music video. Spike Jonze videos have this like really wonderful choreographed magic to it and so much of it feels like really spontaneous and fun. So I wanted to like build in these moments for spontaneity. I wanted to basically roll around on the ground with someone and kick a door open and create a narrative in which we could do stuff like that. I think we were just like, we don't want to be cops. We will be cops special. Are bad. <laughs> we will be special agents. You know who are special agents, Mulder and Scully. Yeah. And so we started watching X-Files and basically came up with the idea to write an X-Files fan fiction. And I thought the best agent partner would be Missy from Mannequin Pussy because she can sort of ham it up and has so much star power. Missy was like an absolute MVP on that video. Missy did my hair and my makeup. She starred in the video. She also carried a lot of very heavy equipment out of the woods at like four o'clock in the morning. Definitely get punk girls to star in your music videos because they go above and beyond. <laughs> this is her backstory. Missy grew up in the New Mexico desert near the White Sands Missile Testing Grounds near Holland Air Force Base. The youngest daughter of a sheep farmer, she was only 10 years old when she experienced her first encounter. With her back turned, she felt a cold metallic touch on the side of her neck and her left ear. She fell to the ground and saw a tall, lanky silhouette stand over her in the moonlight, then a bright beam of light. There's a very, there, there's a whole page, there's a, two more paragraphs. So yeah. I sent this to Missy so she could get into character. Did you think about special agent Shelly Breakfast's backstory as well? Shelly Breakfast does not have as elaborative a backstory, but she's definitely not as serious of an agent. In Ocean's Eleven, Brad Pitt's character is always eating something, and so that was kind of like the model of my character was that I would always be eating and doubting and kind of lazy. The main reference points for this video were obviously the X-Files, Beastie Boy Sabotage, Mysterious Skin by Greg Araki. Mm -hmm. Close Encounters of the Third Kind became kind of my like home base for what I wanted all of the night exteriors to look like. A lot of blue light leaking through the trees and otherworldly points of light scattered through those woods. I had, once again, our trusted go-to gaffer, David Williamson. <laughs> hang almost a dozen LED tube lights up in the trees so we could expose on 60 millimeter film stock at night. I got us an Igaba fogger, which is basically a flamethrower that just spits out smoke instead of flames. Ali Pierce, who did an amazing job on the wardrobe again, came with these really excellent power suits. I bought like all of these wigs that Missy and I tried on. I was almost a blonde. <laughs> then ended up just like having this comically large head. <laughs> like, you have a like... massive, massive head. <laughs> Peter built a beautiful paranormal detector. We also have a few fun Easter eggs on that cork board. The roadhead monster shows up and there's a... SSFAP logo. The scene with Charlie from yeah, the It's Always Sunny. Was Pepe also Sylvia scene yeah. from It's Always Sunny was the key reference for this. Adam was in his apartment and took a picture with this, you know, mask we ordered online. Yeah. And None of us had remembered that we would need this image that's actually on the projector. So I, yeah, put on the alien mask and took a picture of myself and saved it as, this sucks, ha 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 ha, fuck. <laughs> I saw this video of this man in a stop and shop and a robot, like one of the robot attendants, like slowly passing by and I just thought it was so funny and would make for a really good concept video. We shot in Los Angeles at the same grocery store that they shot Stars Born. I feel like this song, you know, has like a really taut, industrial, slow burn quality that reminds me of Bjork's All is Full of Love and that video is one of my favorite music videos of all time directed by Chris Cunningham. I think I, like that was like my main reference. I felt like a, a grocery store in the middle of the night and the slow dance between me 
and a robot would be really funny. Our robot fell through last minute. I started kind of being like, okay, how do I say this? I have the crew, I have the location, I have these outfits, I have this hoverboard, which was originally just supposed to make an appearance in Savage Good Boy. We actually shot Savage Good Boy first. It became a sequel, released prior to Savage Good Boy's sequel. To like prior. The Hobbit. Like The Hobbit. <laughs> Uh, we had Harmony from Girl Pool, who was going to play this really small role as a cashier that we just kind of roll by. And then I just texted her last minute and I was like, can you play a much larger role in this music video? And she was down. Her vibe really reminds me of um, Christina Ricci in Buffalo 66. Mm -hmm. like she has these huge eyes and just like looks so beautiful on camera. Dude, I got really good at hoverboarding. The first time you got on, me and, me was, and Dave were terrified. Yeah, I was also terrified. Everyone was telling me like, you're gonna eat shit on this thing. It's a lot more difficult than you think it is. And I refused to believe it. And then I remember the first time I got on it in the Airbnb to practice, and there was just a moment of like sheer terror for the first like 10 minutes where I was like, there's no fucking way I can ride this thing. In the initial shot, I have to sort of go over this bump on uh, through the doors. And choreographing that was like kind of hard and scary because like you have to get a certain amount of momentum, but then you have to hit a mark. Uh, for me, key lighting references on this one, definitely the that and strobing sequence in the Grimes Oblivion music video came into oh, yeah. play. And we were talking a lot about the Solange uh, Lovers, Lovers in the Parking, in the parking lot. lot video. Dave's best boy, Anderson, spent a couple hours at the beginning of the day re-rigging tubes into the ceiling so we could do these flashing light gags. Our B-suite Easter egg, Ryuta Endo, uh, has made all these like really incredible merch and poster designs for each of the music videos in this trilogy that look kind of like movie posters. This was a really important part of me for me, this instrumental moment with like the exterior push-ins and push-outs at the end, because it was kind of like the connection between two people sort of sparking up the environment, like the store is it reacting to this chemistry that's happening. I feel like Savage Good Boy is like the boyish of this trilogy. Um, yeah, definitely. In the, in the sense that I had this concept for a really long time. It was very fully realized like pretty early on and it felt like such a unique um, concept. I had mostly just watched Sally Potter's Orlando and was obsessed with it and wanted to take Rococo wardrobe and production design and match it in this like industrial post-apocalyptic bunker. Uh, CC Lou was the stylist on this and got Gucci, Puppets and Puppets, Area, this is a Vaquero look. Accessories, everything was just like super on point. It's probably the most literal video we've done where it follows pretty closely to the lyrics. I wrote this song from the perspective of a billionaire after reading a headline about billionaires buying bunkers and thought that's a menacing reality of our times. Pretty early on we're talking about having a celebrity cameo and our top choice was hands down Michael Imperioli. Adam and I are both massive Sopranos fans. He is a lead in one of the most iconic television shows of all time, and he was in Goodfellas. He's like a pretty well-renowned actor, but he... It's also punk. And this is my first time getting to work with like a real actor, and it was wild to just see what someone like that with that, this particular type of thoughtfulness can bring to a scene. I bit the shit out of Michael Imperioli. <laughs> accidentally. You know, it was hard to figure out how do we make it look believable that I'm biting his neck and that blood is coming out. And one of the suggestions was squeeze the bottle of blood like from off camera as you bite in. I was squeezing the bottle and my brain like kind of crossed wires and I kept trying to squeeze the bottle and nothing was coming out. And so my entire body was like tensing, just being like, why isn't this coming out? Like we're burning film. My mouth, like as I was squeezing, like also started clenching down and I just totally forgot where I was, what was going on for a minute. And then we cut and I realized that I had like, he had this huge bite mark yeah. on his neck. And I was like, oh fuck, now like Michael thinks that I'm like this weird kinky girl, like trying to get away. <laughs> And I was like, I'm so sorry. 
Well, we were certainly referencing Kill Bill with the shot of you walking down the table towards Michael was a direct reference From to... the nurse. Yeah, the, uh, L. Woods. L. Driver. L. Woods is, L. Woods is legally is, blonde. That was a reference to L. Woods. <laughs> legally blonde. <laughs> Every single frame shot for any music video on this trilogy was shot on Kodak Vision 3 500T, which is it's the low light film. And luckily we wrote a bunch of interior nighttime music videos. One thing I really love about working with film is that you have to be really decisive. I mean, I think it was just a really bold stance to take to shoot all of these on 16 millimeter and I appreciate you pushing me to do it. It absolutely brings this sense of seriousness to set and there's a lot of deference to getting it right. The stakes feel higher. It adds like a built-in cinematic quality that I feel like this trilogy needed to be elevated to, to like kind of one-up our, ourselves and, and the sort of universes we created before.